Hello everybody, it's Steve, and holy crap, there's been an update to Surviving Mars Below and Beyond. This was actually released on Thursday, November 4th. I got up super early to record uh, the next video in the Steve's Mining Group series, and suddenly there's an update that I can talk about. So this little mini video will be coming out on Saturday the 6th, and the actual gameplay will be coming out on Monday. So let's dive into the little content update. Let's see what they've changed. Um, main focus. And if you don't want to read this video, if you just want to hear me listen to it, you can go ahead, set the phone down, set your listening device down, maybe open up a new tab, do something else. The point of this video is to really let you multitask. And also I can explain what's going on and some of the changes that have happened with the game since its disastrous launch. Main focus. In this first part, we focus on making it easier to explore and expand into the underground earlier, ah ha ha, big thing, on while also making the asteroid lander and elevator easier to use. We also start making below and beyond contact more beneficial to your main colony by introducing a few upgrades that cost exotic minerals. Wait, what? Okay, that might be an issue. Elevator grid resource transfer. The elevator now transfers excess power, water, and oxygen between the Martian surface and underground. That should have been from the get-go. That was uh, that was one of the things I'm like, why are you needing two separate power grids? That was an issue for me. This enables you to start expanding in the underground while relying on your production on the surface. I'm gonna also going to have some mistakes. I just woke up and got out of bed like five minutes ago. Elevator auto mode. You can now set a minimum amount of resources you still want on the surface and underground. While the elevator is in auto mode, it will automatically request resources when under this minimum. You can still manually request resources. Requesting resources for the elevator is now done on the side where you need the resources instead of on the side where you send them from, with errors indicating from where to where the resources will be transported. The cave-ins have been reworked. They no longer require a specific tech to clear and block tunnels that required the landscaping tool will also be removed. Interesting. To still maintain an element of gradual exploration, we introduced the new collapsed tunnels, which do still require the tech to be cleared. Um, increased room for exploration in the underground greatly reduced the number of tunnels blocked while the new collapsed tunnels tech or new collapsed tunnels are placed such that they lead to larger new areas to explore or extra anomalies to find. We also increased the number of anomalies in the underground. Ah, crap. Well, maybe there's some breakthroughs down there. I I'm getting my hopes up for breakthroughs. Exotic minerals upgrades. We introduced a few upgrades to the surface buildings that cost exotic minerals. Improved photovoltaics, doubles power production for solar panels. Exotic mineral treatment. Great ring increases health and sanity recovery from infirmaries and medical posts if you have the Indo building pack. Okay, that's not that's not too bad. Because I mean, if you have the uh, photovoltaics breakthrough, you can still get the double production. But it sounds like exotic minerals plus the hypersensitive photovoltaics may quadruple the power production for the solar panels. Gameplay improvements. Hooray, let's see what we got for this. Added clear warnings to the lander rocket for why it cannot depart yet so you can take action. This should have been with Hotfix 1. This should not have been something that came out a month or two post-launch. Added a Depart Now button to the asteroid lander, which allows you to launch the lander before the requested payload is loaded as long as it has enough fuel. Disable the visited Disable the Visit Asteroid button if there's no asteroid to go to. Remove the Micro-G Vehicles tech. RC vehicles can now always be brought to asteroids. Okay, they've actually made, um, they've done a remove there. Elevators can now recharge drones, just like drone hubs. That's a good idea. Improved the payload feedback on the elevator. Added one drone to terraforming initiative default loadout to fill out the cargo space. After switching map once, all switches afterwards have a fade instead of a loading screen, which shortens load time significantly. This is really... This is a really big one, and this is one that I've actually complained about, not on camera in the videos, but you know, this one's bugged me quite a bit. It shouldn't have to be a, you know, one of the loading, of the splash screens, which I do like. I think they're, it's beautiful artwork that they've done, but every time you did it, you'd hear the whatever warnings you had on each of the... Um, on each of the maps, you'd get like, warning, dust storm approaching. Even though you just clicked down to the underground for a second, you click back and you get, warning, dust storm approaching. It was a little annoying. Balance changes. Hooray. Halved. Research costs for the recon and expansion tree. Reduced exotic mineral costs for underground domes. Added an anomaly close to elevators, which gives some exotic minerals to get you started. That's huge. Uh, rebalanced drone hub extender to cost less exotic minerals. 
increased success chance of jumbo cave events, increased time players have on asteroids, adjusted the tech tree order, moving low-G excavation permits and low-G tunnel supports down while moving underground dome construction and micro-G mining up. I don't think I've researched any of these um, yet, but the only quarrel I have with this is the exotic minerals. I thought that only came from the asteroids. So why are we looking for exotic minerals on asteroids if they're now able to find them on uh, in the underground map? That, that That's a question that I'm going to have to figure out. A lot of bug fixes. Yay. Asteroid lander now gives correct feedback when requiring maintenance. Fixed an issue with the lander rocket showing payload on the landing instead of requested payload. Fixed an issue with the elevator panel not removing colonists already transported to the other side. I'm just going to say fixed and then just list off the things from there. Fixed the following. Lander panel info showing incorrect status when there are not enough prefabs. The lander showing an incorrect status after canceling a trip. The first rainfall milestone not being achieved after reaching all requirements. That's been a big one. Disasters running back to back. <laughs> that, that'll still be an issue. Uh, lander rocket not taken off if RC vehicles required for takeoff or in the cargo of another rocket. Neat. Fixed mirror mis sphere mystery never ending. The counter hover remains on the screen in existing saves. Uh, issue with suffocating colonists continuing to suffocate when they get out of the elevator. Issue with colonists suffocating while trying to reach Michael G habitat. Issue with drones needing several takes on a cave-in to clear it. Issue with vehicle navigation when collapsed tunnels are cleared. Electrolyzer continuing to consume water when turned off. Drone hub extenders not receiving an extra range of 15 hexes. Drone hub extender active range not being redrawn immediately after researching the signal boosters. An issue with the unknown status of drones and rovers while using the elevator fixed empty tooltip and building panel of the forestation plant when the language is set to Turkish. Drones facing the wrong side when gathering metals or exotic minerals. Issue with the rockets. Lander, rockets color being different before and after the construction for some sponsors. Issue with the colonists not occupying at least the last or 14th slot of the Micro-G habitat. Uh, fixed tooltip for the Micro-G habitat colonists. Filter referring to the dome instead of the habitat. Fix the jumbo cave experiment pop-up showing correct incorrect cost cuts. And fixed cave-ins and collapsed tunnels not having a texture in the quick bar. Okay, that's quite a few, but it seems like they are trying to get these things repaired. Oh, that's kind of cool. Game-only bug fixes. Fixed alien artifact anomaly spawning underground in the Dredger's Mystery. Also fixed issue with Mystery 3 counter. Notification triggered by Countdown Sphere Unknown event being stuck. That was mentioned up here. And fixed an issue with the numbers going into negative on countdown timers. Not bad. I mean, there's some really... It seems like they're trying to fix a lot of things. Some of these things I have encountered, a lot of these things I haven't because my gameplays keep failing by the time I get to the asteroid stuff, by the time I really get into the underground. I'm not getting this far in the game. So people who are getting deeper into the gameplay and probably putting, you know, three, four hours in per sitting, well, I'm putting maybe an hour, hour and a half to record those two videos a week, maybe even going into the next week. These ones... Like, I'm not getting this far into it, but I'm hoping to get there in the coming videos. Let's see some of the responses. Um, Sheep Maiden, I cannot respond positively to this. This game is over for me. What an absolute nightmare. My favorite game has been ruined. Uh, Fortuna Draken, I'm liking the changes. Let's be making the underground easier to use. Is definitely going in the right direction, as is lowering the tech costs. Not having the research to clear cabins is also great. I'll take a slower exploration of a rover suddenly being stuck at a cave-in. And me having no way to get it out because of the tech not being researched. Things could still use some polish, but the fact that it's still being worked on as a positive IMO, better than it being left in a messy state. A little split so far, but again, this is this has maybe been online for a couple of hours. What do you think of this content update? I'm actually going to start recording the next video in the series right after I hit stop record on this. So let me know in the comment section what you think of this content update. In a couple days, you'll see the next part of the playthrough, and we'll actually see how this content update is incorporated into the game. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and all the videos that come out on this channel. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.